chapter 12, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year unto you. So up until this time, both the Egyptians and the early Hebrews started their new year in the fall at the autumnal equinox. For the Egyptians, it was the month of thought, and for the Hebrews, it was Tishri. And even today, the Jewish people still celebrate their civil new year at Rosh Hashanah around September. But here, the Lord says the new year would start at the venal equinox, and the first month of Abib would start at the following new moon. And this would be around our March or our April. Verse 3, Speak ye unto the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month, the month of Abib, they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So they are to choose their sacrificial lamb on the tenth day, five days before the Passover. So now, before we go any further, I'd like to point out that today, our Passover lamb is Jesus Christ. Let's go to the book of John, chapter 1, verse 29. The next day, John seeth Jesus coming out to him, and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which take away the sins of the world. In verse 36, And looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. So, as we go through this chapter in the book of the Exodus, I'd like to draw some parallels between the Lamb of Moses and the Lamb of God. Now let's go to chapter 12 of the same book of John. Verse 1, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, this would be the ninth day of Abib, came to Bethany where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. There they made him a supper, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. And skip to verse 12. On the next day, or the tenth day of Abib, when the people were to choose their sacrificial lamb, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and cried, Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. Choosing their Redeemer, the one they hoped would free them from their bondage. Verse 14, And Jesus, when he had found the young ass, sat thereon, as it is written, Fear not, daughters of Zion. Behold, thy King cometh sitting on an ass's colt. These things were understood, not of his disciples at the first. But when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they that these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. Okay, let's go back to the book of Exodus, pick it up at verse 4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. Now let's turn to 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot. Let's go back to the Exodus, pick it up at verse 6, and listen carefully. And ye shall keep it, keep the lamb, up until the fourteenth day of the same month, that's a bid, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it, kill the Passover lamb in the evening. Okay, now let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 27. Let's pick it up at verse 20. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitude, that's the whole multitude, the whole assembly, that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And the governor answered and said unto them, Whither of the twain will ye that I release unto you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but rather atonement was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See ye to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and on our children. Then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. So the multitude, the whole assembly, took part in the killing of the Lamb of God. And the sacrifice of the Lamb would be made in the evening, sometime between noon and sundown. 
So the Hebrew 24-hour day starts at night, right after the sun falls below the horizon and it ends right before the sun goes down the following day. Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening first, and the morning second were the first day. So now the morning hours begin at dawn as the sun starts to rise above the horizon in the morning sky and ends right before it peaks at noon. The evening hours, what we are reading about here, starts right after high noon when the sun starts to descend towards the sunset where it becomes the next day. So the sacrifice would be made sometime between noon and sundown. Now let's return back to the book of John chapter 13 verse 1. Now before the feast of the Passover, this is two days before the feast, when Jesus knew that his hour was come that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, this would be the last supper Jesus would have, and it was on the 13th of Abib, three days after his triumphant ride into Jerusalem, and one day before the Passover was to be killed on the 14th of Abib. The devil, having now put, put by God, by the Most High, into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, to betray Jesus. Skip to verse 27. And after the sop, Satan entered into him, into Judas, then said Jesus unto him, unto Satan, That thou doest, do quickly. Now no man at the table knew for what intent he spake this unto him. For some of them thought, because Judas had the bag, this is the money bag, that Jesus had said unto him, Buy those things that we have need of against the feast, the Passover feast, which is in two days, or that he should give something to the poor. He, then having received the sop, went immediately out, and it was night. So sometime just after dusk. Now sometime after supper, Jesus and his disciples start out to the Garden of Gethsemane. All this was done in the evening at the beginning of the 14th of Abib, when the Passover should be killed. Let's skip to John chapter 18. When Jesus had spoken these words, he went forth with his disciples over the brook Kedron, where was a garden, the Garden of Gethsemane, into which he entered and his disciples. Then the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him and led him away to Annas first, for he was the father-in-law to Caiaphas, which was the high priest that same year. And skip to verse 24. Now Annas had sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. And Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. They said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being his kinsman, whose ear Peter cut off, saith, Did not I see thee in the garden with him? Peter then denied again, and immediately the cock crew. So, still on the 14th of Abib, but just before sunrise, somewhere around 5 a.m., then Jesus was sent to Pilate. Now let's go to John 19, pick it up at verse 12. And from thenceforth Pilate sought to release him. But the Jews cried out, saying, If thou let this man go, thou art not Caesar's friend. Whosoever maketh himself a king speaketh against Caesar. And when Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus forth and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in the Hebrew, Gabbatha. And it was the preparation of the Passover and about the sixth hour. So now it's about 6 a.m. on the 14th of Abib, when the Passover was to be killed. And he saith unto the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate saith unto them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Now let's continue this in the book of Mark, chapter 15. Let's pick it up at verse 25. And it was the third hour, that's around 9 a.m., and they crucified him. Now, most scholars agree that John's gospel is reckoned with the Roman time, the sixth hour being 6 a.m., while the other gospels of Mark, Matthew, and Luke are reckoned in the Hebrew time. Let's skip to verse 33. And when the sixth hour, this is 12 noon, was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, about 3 p.m., Remember, the Passover had to be killed at evening, 
and by the Hebrew calendar, evening is between 12 noon and sundown. Skip to verse 37. And Jesus cried with a loud voice and gave up the ghost. And this sacrifice of Jesus was once and for all time. Now let's return back to the book of Exodus, chapter 12. Let's pick it up at verse 7. And they shall take the blood, the blood of the lamb, and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper doorposts of the house wherein they shall eat it. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roasted with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Eat not of it raw, nor sodden at all with water, but roast it with fire, his head with his legs, and with the pertinence thereof. Pertinence would be the entrails, such as the heart and the liver. And you shall let nothing of it remain until the morning, and that which remaineth of it until the morning you shall burn with fire. And thus shall you eat it, with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat it in haste. It, the lamb, the Passover lamb, is the Lord's Passover. So we see that Passover is not the day. It's the sacrifice. It's the lamb itself. And today, for us Christians, it's the lamb of God. It's Jesus. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood, the blood of the Passover, shall be to you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So like the lamb in Moses' day, which had to die so the firstborn of the Hebrews could live, Today, for Christians, our Passover lamb is Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. It's because of his sacrifice, because of his death, his blood, that we too have been redeemed, not just from the bondage of Egypt, but from the bondage of sin and the bondage of death. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. Therefore, purge out the old leaven, that you may be a new lump, since you truly are unleavened. For indeed, Christ our Passover, our Passover lamb, was sacrificed for us. And we saw how Jesus fulfilled this role perfectly. Let's continue with Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and you shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall keep it a feast by ordinance forever. Did you hear that? Forever. And that's emphatic. And that means that even today, we as Christians should keep the Passover. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. And in the first day there shall be an holy convocation. Convocation means assembly. And in the seventh day there shall be an holy convocation to you. No manner of work shall be done in them, save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, for in this selfsame day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Therefore shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. And again, that's emphatic. In this first month, on the fourteenth day of the month, at evening, you shall eat unleavened bread until the one and twentieth day of the month, at evening. So, for one week out of the year, between the fourteenth of Bib and the twenty-first of Bib, we are to take all the leaven out of our houses, all the breads, cakes, and pastas. Seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses. For whosoever eateth that which is leaven, even that soul shall be cut off from the congregation of Israel, whether he be a stranger or born in the land. Ye shall eat nothing leavened, and all your habitation shall you eat unleavened bread. Then Moses called for the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families, and kill the Passover. And of course we don't crucify Christ every year. He died once for all time. And that is why we use the bread and wine to remind us of that awesome sacrifice. We take the bread as a symbol of the lamb slain, Christ's body broken for us, and the wine, the lamb's blood, poured out for us over the doorposts of our heart. And our Father knows our hearts, 
And if Jesus is in our hearts, he will cause death to pass over us. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop. Hyssop is an aromatic plant from the mint family. And dip it in the blood that is in the basin. And strike the lintels and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until the morning. For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians. And when he seeth the blood upon the lintels and upon the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door and will not suffer the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you. And you shall observe this thing for an ordinance to thee and to thy sons forever. That's three times God says we should keep this feast forever. And that would mean for us Christians, even today. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Let's pick it up at verse 23. For I, this is Paul speaking, have received of the Lord that which I also deliver unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, that's the evening of the 13th and 14th of Bib, when the Passover was to be slain, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. So Jesus is telling his disciples that at the Passover, do these things in remembrance of him. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. So Jesus also commands us to keep this covenant of the Passover. But now, as I stated before, instead of a memorial to Moses and the Hebrew children coming out of Egypt, we are now to remember the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ made once and forever to free us from the bondage of sin and death while we look forward to his coming. For as often as you eat this bread, and this should be done every year at Passover, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. So for the New Testament Christians, Passover is about Jesus, about his death on the cross, about the sacrifice he made for us. And we know that the apostles did as Jesus commanded and kept not only the Passover, but all the feast days. Let's go to the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. They were assembled together and holy convocation, keeping Pentecost. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of a fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Skip to Acts chapter 18 verse 19. And he, that's Paul, came to Ephesus and left them there. But he himself entered into the synagogues and reasoned with the Jews. And when they desired him to tarry longer time with them, he consented not but bade them farewell, saying, I must by all means keep this feast, and this is the Passover feast that cometh in Jerusalem, but I will return again unto you if God wills. And he sailed from Ephesus. Now let's skip to chapter 20, verse 1. And after the uproar was ceased, Paul called unto him the disciples and embraced them, and departed for to go into Macedonia. And when he had gone over those parts and had given them much exhortations, he came into Greece. And there abode three months. And when the Jews laid wait for him as he was about to sail into Syria, he purposed to return through Macedonia. And there accompanied him into Asia, Sopater of Berea, and of the Thessalonians, Aristarchus and Secundus, and Gaius of Derby and Timotheus, and of Asia, Tetricus and Trophimus. These going before tarried for us at Troas. And we sailed away from Philippi after the days of unleavened bread, that's Passover, and came unto them to Troas in five days, where we abode seven days. Skip to verse 13. And we went before to ship and sailed unto Assos, there intending to take in Paul, for so he had appointed, minding himself to go afoot. And when he met with us at Assos, we took him in and came to Mytilene. And we sailed thence and came the next day over against Chios. 
and the next day we were, we arrived at Samos and tarried at Trigalium, and the next day we came to Miletus. For Paul had determined to sail by Ephesus because he would not spend the time in Asia, for he hasted, if it were possible for him to be at Jerusalem the day of Pentecost. So we see that Paul and the apostles kept not only the Passover, but also Pentecost, and I'm sure all the feast days. And again, the ordinance of the Passover is truly forever. Even after our Lord returns during the millennium, we will still continue to keep this feast. Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 22, pick it up at verse 14. And when the hour was come, he sat down and the twelve apostles with him. And he said unto them, With desire I have desired to eat this Passover, this coming Passover in two days, with you before I suffer. For I say unto you, I will not any more eat thereof until it, the Passover, the true Passover, this is Christ speaking of himself, be fulfilled in the kingdom of heaven. And when will this be fulfilled in the kingdom of God? During the start of the millennium period, when death passes over all the saved, over all those who are Christ's. But the dead, those who died without Christ, those who are not saved, will continue in their sleep till the thousand years are over. Let's go to Revelations chapter 20, pick it up at verse 4. And I saw thrones, and they, those who are Christ, sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them as kings and priests. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. And they, those who are Christ, lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. And why? Because we have the blood of the Lamb, the Lamb of God, on the doorposts of our heart, and death passes over us. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. You see, the Passover of Moses' day was just a foreshadowing of the real Passover to come. All the people of Moses' day did eventually die. But the true Passover is yet to come, and that's when we put off this mortality and put on immortality. And when we put off this corruption and put on incorruption. And this true Passover ushers in the eternity. And this is the Passover that we Christians look forward to. So let's return back to the book of Exodus, verse 25. And it shall come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, according as he hath promised, that you shall keep this service. And it shall come to pass when your children shall say unto you, What mean ye by this service? that ye shall say, It is the sacrifice of the Lord's Passover, who passed over the houses of the children of Israel in Egypt when he smote the Egyptians and delivered our houses. And the people bowed the head and worshipped. And the children of Israel went away and did as the Lord had commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. So the very first Passover was kept looking forward to the promise of death passing over them that were faithful. And the descendants of those Hebrew slaves keep this Passover as a memorial looking back on that day. And we Christians today keep this Passover, which is Jesus, looking forward to the promise when death passes over us in the millennium. And then in the eternity, we will also keep this Passover, but as a memorial looking back on what Jesus did for us. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn of the land of Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and all the firstborn of the cattle. So this latest plague is against Sobit, the god of protection, and Circuit, the goddess of protection. Verse 30, And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. They couldn't sleep. They had to check on their loved ones. And this shows that they were taking Moses seriously. And there was a great cry in Egypt, for there was not an house where there was not one dead. And in some cases, where one or both of the parents were the firstborn, or even some living grandparents, then there could be as much as two or three, and even four in one household die. 
verse 31, and he, that's Pharaoh, called for Moses and Aaron by night, that same night, and said, now you can hear the anguish and pain and the brokenness and even the humility in Pharaoh's voice. Rise up and get you forth from among my people, both ye and the children of Israel, and go, serve the Lord as ye have said. And also take your flocks and your herds as you have said, and be gone, and bless me also. Humble before the Lord and before Moses. And the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste, for they said, We be all dead men. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, seven days' worth, and their kneading troughs, being bound up in their clothes and upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses, and they borrowed or asked of the Egyptians jewels of silver and jewels of gold and raiment. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, so that they lent or gave unto them such things as they required. And they, the Hebrews, spoiled the Egyptians. And the children of Israel journeyed from Ramsey to Succoth, about 600,000 on foot that were men besides children. And the mixed multitude, underline that, a mixed multitude went up also with them, and flocks and herds and even very much cattle. Now this mixed multitude will be very significant as we read through this book of Exodus. You see, it just wasn't the Hebrews who were slaves of the Egyptians, but all the undesirables, all those who weren't thrown into the dungeons, including Egyptian criminals, Egyptian debtors, and even prisoners of war, the whole gambit. And they baked unleavened cakes of the dough which they brought forth out of Egypt, again the seven days' worth, for it was not leavened, because they were thrust out of Egypt and could not tarry, neither had they prepared for themselves any victuals. Now the sojourning of the children of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. Now this 430 years is from the promise God made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 7 till the time the law was given to Moses at Mount Sinai. Okay, let's go to the book of Galatians chapter 3. Let's read verses 16 and 17. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not unto seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And this I say, that the covenant, the covenant or the promise that God made to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12, that was confirmed before of God in Christ, and the law, which was 430 years after, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of non-effect. So basically, this 430 years would also include the time Abraham's seed, Isaac and Jacob, spent in the land of Canaan, which would mean that the actual time the children of Israel spent as slaves to the Egyptians would be less than 200 years. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years from the promise, even the selfsame day it came to pass that all the hosts of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. It is a night to be much reserved unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is the night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in all their generations. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. There shall no stranger eat thereof. A stranger is a foreigner, or more important, an unbeliever. But every man's servant that is bought with money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Now circumcision wasn't forced. It was voluntary. It was agreed to by those males who wanted to convert to Judaism. A foreigner and a hired servant shall not eat thereof. And why would they want to if they weren't believers? In one house shall it be eaten. Thou shalt not carry it forth aught of the flesh abroad out of the house, neither shall you break a bone thereof. And all the congregation of Israel shall keep it. And when a stranger shall sojourn among thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, so if a foreigner who lives among you decides to convert, let all his males be circumcised, and then let him come near and keep it and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. And again, why would they want to? 
one law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. Thus did all the children of Israel, as the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron, so did they. And it came to pass the selfsame day that the Lord did bring the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt by their armies.